Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is part two of how to conduct web application security assessment on a real website. And we will be working with OAS Juice Shop. In case you have not, wa not watched the part one, you can go and click on the link above or in the description box and check out the part one before you start with part two. Okay, so let's start with part two where we are going to see the first item of the checklist which is application denial of service. Now this has two parts application flooding as well as application lockout and both talk about how um, there can be an attacker can cause denial of service to an application or to a user's account in this particular case. So we are going to look into this as a whole and we're going to head direct to OVAS Juice Shop. So I have it open in my Chromium browser. Okay. And currently I'm not logged in. No account. Right. So what I'm going to do is when you're going to look for denial of service attack or you're basically look, looking for no rate limit. If there is any rate limit set by the developers, what you're going to do is you're going to look for a post request. So there are multiple kinds of post requests in a website. If I talk about this particular uh, genre of websites which is e-commerce it would be uh, checking when you are when you add the products to your cart and then you are going to check out to buy them that's one post request right there login is again a post request right but before we do anything with the login we need to know at least some user right in the OVAS juice shop right so what I was just going through the website when I realized in the reviews you can directly see not the username, but you can directly see the exact username of the user. So you can see admin at the red juice shop. So we're going to just copy that and we can directly go and do a brute force attack for the login. Now, remember, I'm not trying to log in here. I'm trying to show you if there is a rate limit attached or you can say, uh, rate limit has been put to this particular request or not. Before we do that, I will just enter some random password and click on login and we get invalid email or password. Going back here, you can see this is the post request, which I mentioned that it will be our post request. I'm just going to send it to repeater to just show it to you once. You can see your email and password unauthorized great so now i'm going to send the same request to intruder and i'm going to show you the brute force attack through which we are going to check for application denial of service now in this particular case i'm not going to cause denial of service on to the application because that's just not ethical i believe in this case and obviously, whenever you are uh, checking for application denial of service, you should have prior consent from the stakeholders of that application. If you can go ahead with that. Now, even if you have, uh, let's say, approvals from stakeholder for testing that website, you should still have further approval for denial of service check because that is going to cause a big trouble to the application. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to show you. Well, it's the same process. I'm just going to use less number of requests sent. You'll just understand this if you are not clear yet. So you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply a payload here on the password area. Go to payloads. One payload, simple list. And then I've already found, uh, you know, some password list. There are around 100 most used passwords here on GitHub. I'm just going to copy this. Go back to burp and paste it. You can see some passwords are there. That is great. And I'm going to start the attack. So once the attack is done, everything like all 101 or 100 of them are done. Uh, we will get come back to this and I'll show you the results. Okay. So yeah. Our test is done and I have Warp Suite community right now. If you had professional, 
in the payload section you will also have an option to select from some lists that are already there and they have a password list also anyway as you can see on our 101 request as well okay uh, we are getting a 401 unauthorized and invalid email or password that means the request was still being uh, handled but there was no rate limit set usually when rate limit is set there are some headers of rate limiting here i don't see any moreover it should give me too many requests 429 error and not 401 so that is also not there but i only ran for 100 requests if i wanted to actually cause denial of service i would have done like thousands or lakhs of these requests at a time to make sure that the application crashes so this is one thing that we focused application denial of service in this video in the coming video we will be going through the next part of the checklist which is the access control part parameter analysis authorization and so on so i hope you like this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends Thank you for watching. See you in part 3.